civic engagement, what does that really mean? It really means that as those of us who are elected, and I neglected to introduce myself fully by saying I'm the mayor of Gary, Indiana, that we want our citizens, those individuals who elect us to be involved. How do you encourage people to be involved? After all, as small children, we're taught to join in with the team, aren't we? Who wants to play basketball? Who wants to play volleyball? Who wants to go to the beach? Who wants to sing a song? All of these are forms where we learn very early on to be involved. But as we get older, we become involved in our own worlds. And even though it's really in our best interest to join in and to be civically engaged, we come up with so many reasons why. So it's my job and it's the job of others of us who are elected to determine how we can encourage the public to be involved in government and in the delivery of services to the people. Well, the first thing we can do is to demystify the language. Who are constituents? What is civic engagement? What is a stakeholder? All of that is language that we use to create our own speak, our own discussion about just asking people to be involved. What is collaboration? Well, it's simply working together, encouraging people to work together. And so when we talk about getting the public, getting people involved, it's important that we make it as simple as possible. But it's also important that we make it as easy as possible. So many of us are busy involved in our daily lives, whether we are parents or children, or whether we are students or employed, or whether we are involved in other endeavors, there are those things that we believe that we have to do. And so to come out to a public meeting to express our opinion, or to answer or send an email to express a concern, or to even answer a poll that might be sent around or presented by a public official, many feel that they're too busy. Some people feel that they're too busy to even get involved in block clubs something that involves their very block, their very neighborhood where they live. Some feel too involved to become involved in PTA. All of these are, inform, are forms of civic engagement. So how can I make it easier? Well, one of the most obvious ways is to use the forms and the methods of communication that people use most often. And the form of communication really does depend on who you are. If you're 12 to 21, then you're probably texting. If you are 21 to 40, you may be emailing and it's most likely that if you're over 40, you're gonna pick up the phone and make a phone call. Some of us use social media more than others. Some of us use print or elect, uh, print media or radio or television. All of those methods and modes of communication should play a key role in getting communities involved and encouraging people 
to par take part in their communities. If I can send an email to my mayor, my council member, my commissioner, it's a lot easier if I than if I have to go down to the office and meet with them. But there are some folks who would prefer a meeting. In fact, every week, I have 15 minutes with the mayor where people can come in to City Hall in the city of Gary and talk about whatever they want to talk about, even if they want to talk about me. If they want to complain, they can complain for 15 minutes. If they want to help, they can help for 15 minutes. But why is it important that we get people involved in government, that we engage people civically? I'll tell you why. Because when people feel that I want to hear what they want to say, that other elected and appointed officials want to hear what they want to say, they feel like they have ownership in government. And by feeling like you have ownership in government, you make suggestions. You offer yourselves as volunteers. You provide the energy and the impetus and the, the legs that allow government to work best for the people. Some of the best ideas that I've gotten as a mayor have come from people just simply dropping an email or coming in to the office for 15 minutes with the mayor. One of the most effective things that I'm able to do is to shoot a text message, send a, an email in response to someone who has raised a concern. I'll tell you the other reason why civic engagement is important. It's important because so many of the things that we have to do, whether you're in the city of Gary, Indiana, or Viparaiso, Indiana, or Hammond, or East Chicago, or Indianapolis, Indiana, or whether you're anywhere else in the United States, so many of the things that we have to do are more effective if we do them together. A PTA is more effective if you have 25 parents who work hard rather than five or six. The Chamber of Commerce in your community is much more effective if you have 50 businesses working together rather than 10 or 12. And your neighborhood is so much better for everyone if you have 15 or 20 neighbors who regularly attend block club meetings and another 20 or 30 who are actively engaged, actively participating in some of the neighborhood activity than one or two proverbial nosy neighbors. The importance of civic engagement is because at the end of the day, government is supposed to be of the people, for the people, and by the people. And the most effective way to ensure that government really works as it's designed to work is to make sure that people are involved. One of my favorite educators is Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. And she talks about the impact of people working together. And she puts it like this, and it's so effective. If I touch you with one finger, you may not even feel it. If I put two together, you will begin to know that I'm there. But if I put all of my fingers together and ball it up and make a fist, then together 
we can strike a mighty blow. Let's get engaged. Let's work together. Let's get involved. Let's get on the team. Because if we do that, then together, whatever community you're in, whatever your endeavor is, you can strike a mighty blow. Thank you.